Hi everyone, Mark here and I've got another quick video for you on some of the new C Sharp syntax features in C Sharp version 7 and today we're going to look at pattern matching and I've already written out um, a quick code sample here just to save a little bit of time um, but as you can see I've declared a dictionary of string to object and so um, it's got a name which is a string, it's got a height which is an integer and it's got a date of birth which is a date time. And quite often in C Sharp you'll find that you need to go through a bunch of objects and switch on what type they are. And so here I'm going through my dictionary for each key value pair in my dictionary. If, it's, if the value of that key value pair is a string then I'm going to cast the value to a string and use it. If it's an int, I'm going to cast it to an int and use it. And if it's a date time, I'm going to cast it to a date time and use it. And this is a, a fairly familiar pattern that if you're a C Sharp programmer, you have probably written code similar to this many times. And really what pattern matching is giving us in C Sharp 7 is the ability to simplify this syntax. So instead of having to do this uh, check and then cast, I can delete this line and I can just say if key value pair is string, s and so I give my variable a name if it is and then I can use s there. Likewise I can replace this with int i and with date time d. So that's a really nice uh, simple way of just cleaning up the syntax of your code a little bit and there's also a version of this that works with switch statements. Now switch statements Oh, really my favourite bit of C-sharp syntax, but this gives them a little bit more usefulness. Now we can switch on the type of the value in our dictionary. So if it's a string, um, then we'll put it into the S uh, variable and use it in the next line. If it's an int, we'll put it into I. And the other nice thing that this syntax has got is the ability to add a when clause. So I can say if it's an integer and i is greater than 100 then I'll go into this um, case in the switch statement otherwise I won't. So if we run this code we're going to see we go through first the dictionary here with the if statements and then we go through the dictionary again with the um, switch statement syntax. So if I change this when clause uh, to be less than 100 then the second time through you'll see we don't show the height um, so we could then put another clause into here and when it's greater than 100 or greater than or equal to if we didn't want to miss any and we can see that we get that there. So this is a nice um, syntax improvement to C Sharp. It doesn't really enable you to do anything that was impossible to do before. It just cleans up your code a bit. Now you might be thinking I'd be a little bit more um, thrilled with this feature seeing as um, I quite like F sharp and F sharp has got pattern matching and that's one of the things that's awesome about F sharp and it is great that C sharp has now got pattern matching as well. However, one of the things that really makes pattern matching in F sharp so awesome is another feature called discriminated unions and discriminated unions, if you've not come across them in F sharp, basically they allow you to say that this variable is either one of these or it's one of those or it's something else and it can only be those options and that allows you when you're setting up your pattern matching to the F sharp compiler can force you to cover all cases. Here you can see that this switch statement doesn't force us to cover all cases. I can delete this line and the C sharp compiler is fine with that. I can even delete the, um, the date time option as well and the C-sharp compiler won't complain. Um, so it's not quite as powerful as pattern matching is in F-sharp but still it's a really nice addition to the language and hopefully will clean up your code a little bit.